What's up everybody? I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. I got another little review for us. So I'm actually in the market for another car. Now don't automatically be like, oh, he's selling the E55. Let me unsubscribe. Don't uns unsubscribe. Not selling the E55. Never going to sell that car. The E55 is staying, but those 10 miles to the gallon are kind of killing my wallet. So I'm thinking about potentially adding another car to the fleet. Maybe um, something like this or, you know, I'm also considering maybe a, an Audi S4, just depends, but let's talk about this. So this is a 2015 Mercedes E400. Now, you guys know I'm a huge Mercedes guy, obviously by my channel, but this specific one is really interesting to me. One, because I love this color. I think it's an interesting color. And two, because I've always loved the body style of the E-Class of the e Coupe. So let's take a little history lesson. The original E-Class Coupe, was the W124, which ran from the early 80s to about, I wanna say, the about early to mid 90s. Now, I love those things. They're beautiful as hell. Pillarless coupes, amazing cars. Probably not a great daily driver now that it's probably like 30, 40 years old, so yeah. But then, Mercedes went to the CLK, which was basically the E-Class Coupe, but they just renamed it as the CLK. I think those are cool. The first generation CLK is cool. The 55 is all right. Um, the second generation is cool. I love the CLK DTM and I love the CLK 63 Black Series. That's a badass car. Maybe we'll get one one day. But this is really what I like. This is officially, if you want to call it, the second generation of the E Class Coupe. This is based off the W212 E Class, which you guys know how I feel about it. Not, not the biggest 212 guy. I think they're awesome looking cars, but the interiors are kind of. Eh, and we're gonna talk about that on this one. This particular one, as I said, is a 2015 E400, which means it's got that nice twin turbo V6 underneath the hood. I'll show you guys what that's like in a second. But this one, I love this color. So as you guys can see in the sun, it's really bronze. So this Mercedes calls Dolomite Brown Metallic. And of course it's brown, but I love it. I think it's like that beautiful brown, bronze chocolate color it's just it's really nice and it offsets it awesome with those nice silver diamond cut wheels i think it's a really pretty looking car definitely a very beautiful car elegant with that beautiful coupe styling now because it's a 2015 it is a facelifted 212 that means that you got those nice led tail lights in the rear more aggressive rear bumper the side profile they, they didn't really change it's pretty much the same but the front end you also ended up getting a newer bumper as long as with that nice new aggressive uh front grille and then those beautiful uh headlights with those daytime running lights which i'll show you guys in a second actually let me throw in a picture this is what it looks like with those daytime running lights really pretty i really like it but this is honestly what i'm considering i'm really considering getting one of these you guys definitely let me know would you guys be interested in seeing something on this you know seeing something like this on the channel because of course, I'm gonna bring it on the channel, but you guys let me know. If it's something you, you're interested in, I'll definitely maybe consider adding it. Whether it's this one or another one, or maybe even an E550. Probably not though, because I'm trying to save gas, not you know waste it with another one. But yeah, so beautiful exterior. I really like it. I think Mercedes really knocked it out of the park with the styling, especially with the facelifted cars. The pre-facelifted ones are beautiful, but I think these ones are way better. But let me show you guys that interior and then we'll go kind of go on from there. So you have two options to get in this car because this one does have keyless entry. You have the key, which you guys recognize this key. It's basically a Mercedes key from the last 30 years. But going up to the car, so currently it's locked. So to unlock it, you just put your hand behind the door handle and it unlocks the door. Vice versa to lock it, you have this little indentation here. You push it, locks the car. Now that beautiful dolomite brown is really contrasted with this really nice i want to say almost like a caramel like a brownish beige color it's really pretty i think this is a beautiful combination you have the dark brown with the lighter brown really pretty but hopping in this car it's really comfortable you don't have to really duck your head as much it is really um you know spacious in here for what it is but to fire it up as i said this one does have the keyless entry so it does have keyless go you have the button right here so that's what you guys are hearing is that as i said twin turbo v6 it is a nice sounding motor it's 
pretty good, but go ahead and uh, close this door. It is a really, really nice sounding door. It has a, you know, a harder thunk to it, which is good. It's what we like, old school Mercedes style. It's really nice. I do like that, you know, it's, it has a very nice sounding, you know, very sound interior. Now, let's get to the part of where, if you guys remember, if you guys have seen my video where I discussed how the 211 has a better interior than the 212, let me show you why. So, this is plastic. 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 Oh, guess what? Plastic. All plastic. Now, guys, this car new was in the 60s. Mercedes, if you're going to charge somebody $60,000 for a car, why would you put this plastic in here? Now, you guys may be sitting here talking about, well, come on, man. You know, it's, it is a really nice car and you're just judging it. I agree. It is a very nice car, but there's parts of it where they you can tell they cheaped out and it's like, why? Why would you do that? You're selling a car for this much money and you're just going to, you know, cheap out. But regardless, let's just get past that. I love this three-spoke steering wheel, very aggressive, almost AMG style. You have nice paddle shifters. You have the typical Mercedes three-pod gauge or kind of like, you know, in my E55. You have your um, fuel gauge on the left, then the temp. You have your speedo in the middle, and then you have the tachometer on the right, which is nice. Uh, this car particularly uh, does offer uh, blind spot assist, as you guys can see there with the triangles on on each mirror, it'll start beeping at you. It'll basically just be like, hey, there's somebody in your blind spot, be careful. Um, it does also offer start stop, which I hate. You turn it off from here. I hate start stop. This one does also give you the option of having heated seats as well as cooled seats on. It's a really weird sensation. So if you guys are into that kind of thing, maybe, but looking at the infotainment screen, it is kind of a bland little infotainment screen. It's the same one that's been in the, you know, it was introduced in the W221S class in 07. It's just an updated version, so yeah, it's all right. Uh, navigation's all right. Again, it's not the greatest thing. You have an all right map. Let me kind of zoom in for you guys. And then you also have this, uh, you know, you have audio, you have Bluetooth and everything. So it's, it's, it's nice, it gets the job done, but it's definitely not, you know, modern day because now we all have CarPlay and everything. But yeah, climate control, you guys know how much I love it when it's actual physical buttons and not that, you know, stupid freaking let me integrate it into the infotainment screen type of thing that some companies do. I hate that. This is nice. I can control my, my vent speed from here. I can control my temp, everything. That's nice. Two cup holders, something I don't have in the 55. You have an ashtray in here, which is nice. You have the controller for the screen. Again, this is not a touch screen, so don't, don't get your nasty fingerprints on it. This is kind of like the reminiscent of the uh, 221S class where it's like, you know, you have the keypad. This one is probably just for coins or something. Let's open this. There's a button right here. You just push it, opens up. You do have an adapter for an iPod. It's pretty nice. So that's nice. Overall, it is a nice interior. Up here, you do get this really nice looking panoramic roof. It is one touch. You just flick it back, opens it up. Again, to close it, you just push down. One touch, it does close. This will open up and go back, retract. Very nice, I like it. I mean, you know, I'm a fan of this car. I love this color combination and this engine's really peppy and I like it, you know. It's the V, the natural aspirated V6 that this one replaced in the E350 is not a bad motor per se, but it's also not the greatest, you know, performance car out there. And, you know, this isn't either. This isn't a performance car, but it is a nice sort of, how do I put it? This is a nice like GT Cruiser. And we'll talk about that more, you know, as we get into the driving aspect of it. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, check out those rear seats real quick. Getting access to the rear seats. There's a handle over here, you just pull it. Once you do that, you click, pull it forward. The seat will move up and retract the headrest for you. Now the back seats, I'm not gonna get in because it's I'm kind of a bigger guy and it's it's kind of hard, but there I don't have much headroom back there. I'm six feet tall and the headroom's kind of lackluster. And honestly, with the seat closed back, as you can see that seat's pulled back, there's like no room. I mean, you can maybe fit a toddler back there, but that's honestly pretty much it. It's definitely made for two people, but I guess you can put somebody back there if, if you want to make them suffer. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the motor. So here it is, Mercedes's twin turbo V6. Now, this did replace the naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6 that was in things like the E350. Um, this came out in 2014. They introduced this, or not 2014, excuse me, in 2015, so the first year like this car is, 
they came out with this V6. So this replaces the E350. And now, officially, since 2015, the Mercedes lineup, DZ classes did have twin turbos. So you have the twin turbo V6, and then in the E550, you have the twin turbo V8, which is a, that's a monster of a car, but it also guzzles gas. So this particular one, some specs on it, it makes 330 horsepower and about 354 pound-feet of torque. It's honestly really nice. The car will get out of its way. You don't have to worry about passing people or anything. It's a quick car. It moves um, as well as it is mated to a seven-speed. It's a pretty old kind of seven-speed that Mercedes used around the time. Now they've gone to nine speeds, but it is nonetheless a decent transmission. It shifts decently quick. This car does get about 20 miles per gallon in the city and 29 in the, in the, on the highway for a combined amount of 23. So that's pretty good. It's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a better, you know, car on gas. Still, I don't want to sacrifice the luxury that my E55 offers. So this is something I'm considering, but definitely let me know, you guys. What do you guys think? Is this something you'd want to see on the channel or maybe not? But let's go ahead and uh, hop in the driving aspect of this video. Setting off in the E400 coupe, first things first, this is not a replacement for the E55. I already told you guys that I'm keeping that car probably forever. This is just gonna be probably like my daily for a while, we'll see. I, I don't know, I don't even know if I'm getting this car, but yeah. So the first thing you notice when you're behind the wheel of this car is, you know how people typically say Mercedes feel very, very heavy and all that? This car, while you can feel its weight in some corners, it feels a lot more sportier than it should because at the end of the day this is not a sports car this is a grand touring coupe that you know you're supposed to kind of daily drive you're kind of supposed to just conquer the whole country you could probably hop in this car and drive it to florida from here and not have any issues because it's just that comfortable like going over this bump right here it's pretty comfortable and now this car i should mention does not have air suspension so it's not like some of them where they have air ride this car has regular old shocks and springs and it handles and it rides really well. I like it. You know, you do feel, of course, some, some road imperfections. You do feel some potholes and everything, but all in all, it's pretty solid and it's pretty nice. I like it. But I think if you guys were interested in something like this, you really should think about, is it something I'm, you know, I'm looking for or maybe not let me let me show you guys what this thing can kind of do in a straightaway so we're gonna lower the window a little bit put in sport mode kind of turn off on this little road right here i tell you guys man this thing will surprise you it is pretty quick for what it is it is it is a decently quick car now that beeping you heard that's the blind spot and it's flashing red at me because there's this Chevy Cobalt in my blind spot, but that could get probably kind of annoying because that is the same noise. I think if you have like a malfunction, it'll beep like that too. So <laughs> that could be kind of bad, but regardless, I like it. I really do. I think it's a, it's a solid car. I think that if you guys are interested in something like this, you should definitely consider the E400. It's definitely a lot more powerful than the regular old, regular old E350 was. It's not as quick, obviously, as the E550. And if you're kind of looking for something really sporty, because Mercedes never made an AMG version of the W212 Coupe cars, so the E550 is probably your best bet if you're looking for the closest thing to an AMG car, like in coupe form. So yeah, I think... Here's what I found. Thanks, Siri. I think it's a, it's a great platform. I think that this is definitely a big contender for me. I do like the car a lot. I like the specific one with the options it has, with the color combination. But let me know down below, you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Is this something that you guys would consider or not? I mean, the 20 miles per gallon is pretty nice. I do like that. And in terms of how this car rides and drives, it's definitely something I'm looking for. It's very comfortable. I'm not sacrificing the luxury that I have in the E and you know my AMG, buying something like this. But I'm obviously not gonna jump the gun. I'm gonna think about it. I gotta check out some other options as well. So I do like this car, definitely. It's definitely a nice car. This particular one is at a good price range. This car, um, they're asking 23 for it. It's got 85,000 miles, pretty good. But these cars have definitely come down. So these were like, like I said, maybe mid to high 60s new. And nowadays you could pick one of these up with decent miles for like, you know, low 20s, maybe mid, depending on miles. So that's pretty good. 
you know, it's pretty good for the miles that the car has. You can also get this in convertible form. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but I don't care for the convertibles. I prefer the coupe. I do like this panel roof. You know, I'm not a big fan of sunroofs, but in this car, it kind of works. I don't know why, it just does. But yeah, this is kind of a weird review. It's not like my typical ones, but you guys definitely let me know down below what you guys think of the E400 coupe. Is this something, would you guys be interested in seeing this on the channel? We could also do some you know, mods to it, maybe a light exhaust, not, not as crazy as the E55. Light exhaust, maybe an intake, maybe a tune to make the turbos kind of, you know, be more happy. But yeah, I'm definitely liking it. The infotainment screen is nice. You know, the sound system is, it's all right. It's a Harman Kardon, so it's a good system. It's not, you know, it's not the Burmester that's in the newer S-Classes and whatnot, but it is a nice car. And when you're just daily driving it, it's, you know, it's very nice. It wafts down the road. Um, I do, I don't like that uh, start stop feature. You know, the auto start stop, I hate that. So I'll probably figure out a way to maybe like code it out or something if I can remove it but it's really nice i mean just driving down the road you know i'm very comfortable in here with the vented seats on and yeah i have plenty of headroom as you guys can see but yeah I, I i like it i truly do and like let's say if i needed to pass somebody you just stomp on it Oof. okay then that's that's i like that man it, it'll definitely get out of its own way for sure it's no slouch and I, I, I definitely do like the, uh, I definitely do like this. You do have the manual, obviously, if you can shift it yourself. I'm probably never going to use that, let's be honest here. It's not, it's not a sports car, so. But yeah, thank you guys all so much for checking out the video. Definitely let me know down below what you guys think. It is a shorter review than typical ones, but let me know what you guys think. Is this something you're looking, you know, would you be consider, would you consider something like this? Or do you think that you got to stick to, you know, you gotta stick to maybe like something else maybe the bmw is your preference because you want some sportier but definitely let me know down below i'm really interested in hearing what what you guys all think but thank you guys so much for checking out this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one